Good morning, everyone. First, uh, this video, I want to thank everyone who took the time to solve the problem, the previous problem in the previous video. Uh, on a, It was a quadratic. And you all came up with different solutions. There were a couple different solutions in the comment section, but you, uh, if you got it correct, you know who you are because I pinned a comment clarifying what the correct answer was. I wasn't originally going to make this video with the solution so soon, but it's rainy. I was going to go out, test my camera, film camera, and I was going to go around film, but it's actually raining today in Lynchburg. It's raining. It's, 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 a uh, it's rather cold. So instead of going to the downtown area where I was going to film some of the buildings and I, I finally was able to get film, this is an eight, but those of you who don't know, this is a, an eight millimeter Sakonic film camera. It is from nine. It's a uh, Sakonic micro eye. It's from 1964 and it works just very well. The problem is I had filmed a couple of uh, several months ago. I filmed something, but unfortunately the, uh, the film was damaged because I made a mistake uh, when I was packaging it to send it to, uh, to the developer, to the film developer. And I wasn't, I wasn't able to do it. So uh, that was a careless mistake. Thankfully there was nothing too important in that film. Uh, but now uh, I'm going to be very careful. I will share it with you, whatever I film, I will share it with you uh, on this channel because it takes this, uh, takes black and white, um, it's in black and white and it works wonderful. I mean, the mechanics of it is just absolutely uh, stunning. It's, it's, ra it's a little bit heavy, um, but I would much rather have these than the so-called, the iPhones and the, uh, I just cannot be, I, I cannot be distracted by mobile phones. It, it bothers me. You know, sometimes I'm walking around and I'm in a place and I hear people that it, it's a constant, like the, the, the sound it makes when the texts uh, come through. It's, it's just not for me. So I, I find that this keeps me more disciplined when I actually want to film something. It has more of a purpose behind it because it's actually, it's also more expensive. It's expensive to develop the film. But because it's more for me, because it's more intentional, it's well worth the wait and it's well worth the price. But anyway, uh, if you're looking only for the solution, then you should fast forward to the end of the video because I'm going to be talking about quadratics in a more theoretical sense. There's a lot of people out there who need a rigorous explanation on quadratics. So that is what I'm going to do in this video. All right, everyone, I'm giving you a preview, a taste of excuse me, what you can expect to find in my upcoming, I'm still finishing it up, but it's my upcoming algebra book, full course on algebra, the done the right way, the rigorous way, the pure mathematics way. Uh, we got to talk about compound sentences in relation to our topic on quadratics today. Now you recall that, and I've typed it up already. I, I pre-typed it so that, because I know uh, some of you say that I should type it already uh, instead of taking the time. And it makes, it makes a lot of sense. That way we don't take up time typing. So you recall when we have a compound sentence, you have either or, let's say either X minus three equals zero or X plus two equals zero. And that is the equivalent to the following. You have, you can rewrite that as the following equation, X minus three, times x plus two is going to give you zero. So in general, if any real numbers, again, real numbers, very important, the, the set of numbers you're working with, we'll call them root one and root two are the roots of a quadratic equation in x, then the quadratic must be equivalent to the following that you see here. Now you recall a quadratic is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and a cannot be equal to zero. And therefore, uh, if you take that same form and you divide by, remember the leading coefficient, very important, the vocabulary, the leading coefficient here is a. And if you divide by a, you get something that looks like this. x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals zero. And you now have the crowning jewel of all of this, which is the following theorem. And it says, and some of you, you've proven to me 
in the comment section, in the previous comment section that you're familiar with. That's a very uh, hopeful sign. It gives me a lot of hope. A lot of students around where I live, they're not familiar with these things, even at the high school level. So it says we have the following theorem. The solution set of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And of course, a cannot be equal to zero. Otherwise, you do not have a quadratic anymore. Is we're going to call them two roots if and only if the sum of the roots is going to have to equal negative b over a and the product of the roots root one times root two is going to give you the c over a the quotient so if we were to apply this in a in a normal problem let's say actually the following problem was something i gave my tutoring students what if we had is i forgot what the roots were but we'll do um one plus i think i remember now All right, have a moment, pause the video, let me know what you think. Are these the roots of this quadratic equation? All right, did you pause the video? Well, if we use the theorem that we were discussing, we're saying that these two uh, are the, that these are the two roots of the solution set. So according to our theorem, we have negative b, over a and in this case what is the value of b we have negative 4 and that should be placed over 4 which is going to give us positive 1 right because negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1 you have a negation symbol which goes which makes it go back to the inverse which is positive 1 all right so then we have c over a which is negative one quarter so let's take the sum of the roots the sum of the roots must equal one well the roots that are given to us here are one plus radical two over 2 plus 1 minus radical 2 over 2. And of course, we are indeed going to get 1 as our sum from this. So, so far, the sum of the roots check out. But what about the product of the roots? Well, that would mean 1 plus radical 2 over 2 multiplied by 1 minus radical 2 over 2. And this is really a difference of, well, if you factor it out, it would be the difference of squares. And of course, it would give you negative 1 quarter, which is what our product was. So yes, these are the, if you use the theorem, these would be the solutions to that quadratic. Let me know in the comment section, please. How many of you, I know so, I know several of you, you showed me in the comment section, you were familiar with this. How many of you are not familiar with this? If you're, if you're studying quadratics right now at the high school level, college level, let me know if this is familiar to you at, at, or if it makes sense. All right, now we got to discuss the actual problem, the problem itself. All right, now some of you, I saw, there, there were many interesting points of view in the comment section some of you solved this problem by using the graphic approach uh, which is very common these days um, in, in many 
uh, in good programs. I'm not against necessarily graphic solutions. However, I took a, um, there, uh, what I was getting at with the problem, this is a problem from my book, by the way, what I was getting at is to see if a students could apply the theorem that we discussed earlier. So the original problem said, given the polynomial function p of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 11, where p of x is less than or equal to k, and the solution set is a closed interval, remember the brackets when you see that means closed interval, are a 0r. So we needed to find the value of 2k minus 5r. So really, it's a, it's, it's a basic evaluating an expression kind of question with a twist because you have to apply <coughs> the theorem, but then you, uh, you just do simple algebra when you actually do the evaluations. So the algebraic approach using the theorem we discussed is since we said that P of X is less than or equal to K, you can rewrite the equation as X squared minus 6X plus 11 minus K is less than or equal to zero. Now, oftentimes what I have noticed is Students sometimes have a difficulty understanding that when you have a quadratic form, like let's say ax squared, the general form, plus bx plus c equals zero, a lot of students, when they look at the c, they think, okay, a constant is a number. Um, no, not necessarily. This whole thing, actually, the 11 minus k, that can be the constant there. So don't be, don't be tripped up necessarily by that. A constant is just means that it's the part of the, the third part of your expression here. So the sum of the roots, we said, should be equal to six. So you have negative B over A. According to our original equation, that means the B is negative six. And then you have negative six divided by one. And then the negation of that, because it's negative B over A. So you get positive six as your, I should put the minus sign just to be clear. Sometimes when I'm, it should be like this, negative. There we go. All right, so that means that you get positive six from this. So now we can find the sum. The sum has to equal six, the sum of the roots to be clear. The roots are zero and r. So zero plus r equals six. And therefore, the value of r equals 6. We're almost done by now. So now, the, the product of the roots is going to have to equal 0. Why? Because 0 times r is 0. And so, if we set it equal to the constant, the constant is 11 minus k over a. a is 1 equals 0. That means that k has to be equal to 11. And therefore, we, we're now done. The question is asking you to find 2k minus 5r, k is equal to 11, r is equal to 6, 2 times 11 is 22, 5 times 6 is 30, 22 minus 30 equals negative 8. So congratulations to those of you who got it correct. If you did not get it correct, there were some of you who did not get this correct. Now you see why uh, you have to study the theory behind uh, all these theorems in quadratic equations. If this video was helpful to you, please continue to help our mission. Please continue to subscribe. We're, we're now, it's just amazing how God is blessing us. We are over, uh, we have so many subscribers at this point that I've lost, you know, I think it's over 24,000 subscribers now. So I'm glad that this channel is being a great help to those of you who are taking math very seriously. Um, next week, we'll continue with our logic section, of course, and other topics as well. And tomorrow, Sunday, we'll bring you the, uh, I'll bring you the Sunday message. I know some of you really love my Sunday messages, which we'll be talking about more about ethics and morals tomorrow and how you should live right. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day.